Welcome to episode of Potion Sword Run. Original seed coming at you from my living room. Now, I have an interesting subject for you. And it has to do with the community and a company that I'm not really too familiar with. Um, we just happen to enter cross the way that mainly gaming communities do. And a few things popped up that I found interesting and so did others. But for some reason, people aren't really talking about it. And I want to know why. But before we begin, again, do not like this video. I am still wanted for stealing my neighbor's cats. They keep on knocking. And I won't let them in. Now, recently I watched a video from Overthink Gaming talking about how he was breaking up the Three Amigos podcast because he felt he was getting too close to the company and other creators who were too close to the company where he couldn't be himself anymore. Because right now, the, the number one thing is I'm trying to pull myself away from 1UP, like big time. I'm not saying I'm not going to do 1UP content. I love the brand. I love the cabinets. I, I'm a retro guy that loves arcades. Like this shit is fun, but I definitely want to pull away from being too close to like people that are close to the company or just too close where I can't express my opinions myself. And also too close means like just de get not doing live streams anymore, like getting away from that, just doing my own content, how I feel like the whole live streaming thing I'm trying to pull away from. Yes, I do want to do laundromats because that doesn't have anything to do with one up, but that does mean that I want it out of WRP. Does that mean I'm out right now? No. We'll see how it goes. Let's just say that I had a talk with my boy and it was emotional. Let's just see how this goes. But as of right now, like I was just trying to pull away and it's a decision that I'm going to stick with right now is I need to focus on making content on this channel and I need to focus on my opinions being my opinions and not altered by, by people that I'm around or, or a company that's too close. And that's the biggest thing why I want to pull away from one up. Now I give overthink gaming a lot of credit a lot of credit for being able to step away from the company and his friends um, because we know that can be difficult we know of other people who are unable to do that even though they should have done that a long time ago in other communities so I don't knock him for getting close and being like holy shit and then stepping away that shows good moral character in my opinion so i ended up leaving a comment down there in that video because smash jt happened to reply and i found it quite telling i feel like you're overthinking all of this face with tears of joy you should probably invest 10k into the company Grinning squinty face! Ha 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 ha! Love you, Smash! Rolling on the floor laughing, rolling on the floor laughing, rolling on the floor laughing, rolling on the floor laughing. Now, I wasn't trying to troll there. What I was trying to do was give props to Overthink Gaming from actually thinking about it and stepping away from the company instead of falling for the traps and you know getting too close to the point where you invest your money into it. That's all that was. Not there to make fun of people. It had to do with the conversation at hand, that's all. Now, I was gonna leave it at that. Go away with my business, just keep on doing what I do because that's what I do. But then over there on Twitter, I saw an ally of the of the of the channel, Genovi, um, share out a tweet. What's up with companies delivering half-finished products and pretending it's okay? This ordeal is an embarrassment, and one arcade should be called out for knowingly shipping a product that is essentially a fraudulent mess. Check out this YouTube by The Rexer Show. The Rexer Show? What's that? 
Rex Kwon Do! I remember Rex karate kicking people in my Fanboy Wars series. Cool guy. So I hear. I don't know. First time I watched a full video of his. But I did end up watching it on the very enlightened. I ended up subscribing. I'm a fan now. What do you say? But in this video, he shows an interview um, about a, a one arcade one up executive uh, talking about the problems with Bliss. Um, and not the problems that we already know about have, not having late hits and stuff, but having multiplayer problems. Essentially, a reason why a modern gamer would buy a cabinet to play multiplayer. But it sounds, well, in fact, Let's just see what Rex has to tell us. So you recently ordered or picked up NFL Blitz Legends by Arcade 1UP. And maybe you knew that it was missing all the late hits, missing some tackles, missing some audio bites, missing players on the rosters. Maybe you were aware of all that, but you still wanted it anyway. But did you know that there's some breaking news and problems that you might not be aware of? Take a listen to an interview that John D did last night as I'm making this video as where he talks about online play and the possible functionality of it working with NFL Blitz. I'm verifying all of that now. Here's a good question about the Blitz lobbies currently says it's not live. If they get shipped no. next week, how soon will they go live? No, no, no. It won't be for a few weeks. It won't be for a week so people can still yeah. play. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, I'll just tell you guys this now. Like, mm -hmm. this game is, you know, like a lot of games, was not meant for online play. Mm -hmm. You know, and and especially this version of the game that is is really taxing on mm -hmm. on this chip, even though it's a higher chip, right? Mm -hmm. And then you know, to to be able to run sixty frames mm -hmm. online, it's been very difficult. We were ha we're having difficulties with the online uh, performance right now that we're working through. And uh, when we get closer to it, uh, we'll, we'll be really honest about what that online experience looks like. When, mm -hmm. when we get close, when, when we get closer to development and knowing what that next patch is, we'll I'll, I'll let the probably I'll let the community know where we're at next week. And again, I got to agree with what the Rexer show says. Right now, I looked, and you can buy the Blitz cabinet from one from Arcade One Up for six hundred bucks, five ninety nine ninety nine. And on there, it says that you can play over Wi Fi multiplayer. And they're selling it now. Yet, executives are saying that they're gonna be telling us news about it maybe in a week or so making it sound like it's not going to have multiplayer. If that is not false advertisement, if that is not a company taking advantage of the gamers and the public, I don't know what is. This is essentially an Amico situation happening all over again, or has been happening and people had just been paying no mind to it. And that's why I asked the question, why? Why are we allowing one company to get away with shady business practices, charging somebody 600 bucks for a cabinet that says it's gonna have Wi-Fi multiplayer, but it might not. And of course, I see this as a problem, but there are many out there who don't see it as a problem which is in itself a problem. For example, these things are nothing but overpriced IKEA toys to begin with. No offense to anyone, but they're made for casuals. If I was gonna spend $700 on a cabinet, I'd get a real one, not a knockoff emulation cabinet. That's irrelevant. The issue is false advertising. They release a product that is missing part of the game. They promise online play. It doesn't function two weeks after launch. It contains what they admit is an underpowered chip. It's causing issues that may not be resolved, etc. It's not irrelevant. They've cut corners from day one. Da, da. 
Why is anyone surprised? Identical reasons to the Intellivision Amico. Die hearts understand the situation, but they are not the majority consumer. Now, I don't know if it's just coincidence, but the Retro Bro and Smash saying that it's no big things is reminiscent to how they were acting when they were part of the Intellivision Amico cult. Maybe they're susceptible to that type of brainwashing? I don't know. I'm sure Retro Bro is going to respond saying that he disagrees with all that stuff and yeah, he just doesn't want to pay no attention because it's been going on for so long and he's trying to walk away from it. And then Smash JT is going to be like, so, you know, it's going to go the way it's going to go. But I am interested to know more about what's going on with this community. I want to know if they have a cult like overthink gaming kind of suggested who have time slots to sell products that are not that great to the consumer who cannot share their opinions freely has there been this big old thing going on under our noses and we just been ignoring it it seems like there has been like i said I'm a fan of the company. Like a company is going to do what a company is going to do. I realized a long time ago, I told myself, these guys aren't my friends. They're businessmen. They're going to do what they do. And I don't see anything wrong with it. But what I do see something wrong with is the content creators, whether it's with that fighting game group or whether it's with a whole group of creators so they can sell out their warehouse and be salesmen for free. And that's one thing that I felt the company did during their warehouse sales. Like all the YouTubers were together, together having time slots, selling, including me. I happened to be one of them. Hey, buy Big Blue. It's my favorite cabinet, which it is. I was telling the truth, but I wasn't going to go on stream saying, hey, man, that control panel is too low and slanted. If you got carpal tunnel, that shit's going to kick in. We're old guys, but it's a good cabinet. It really is. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to say shit like that. But I felt like I was being honest. They didn't tell me to say nothing or whatever. But when you're around this atmosphere of people, just like you kind of know to not say the bad and they never tell you that but you just kind of know so i felt like i was like i remember i was like oh man i want to be honest but i can't and and when, once you get in that situation you start feeling a certain way you start feeling like this isn't for me but then again i don't know like i said i'm just in the outside looking in and from what i see is only two people Overthink Gaming, or three should I say, The Rexer Show and Genovi, who are bringing light to this matter now, who are saying, hey, everybody, look, some shit's going on down here. Now, I want to see what's going to happen with this Blitz cabinet, and if it's finally going to get the online multiplayer that it was supposed to have. And if it doesn't, whoo-wee, it's going to cause so much backlash that I think I'm ready to see what's going on, get involved, and just pay a little bit more attention. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, when shit is a fan, run.